Uh, I have with me Dr. Dominic Kayene. He's the former Attorney General and also Bogatanga East MP. Uh, thank you so much for former joining us. Form, indeed, former Deputy Attorney yeah. General. Yeah. Today, it seems that <laughs> perhaps, perhaps it's the situation at hand, the, the right, adrenaline right. of breaking don't, news. Don't worry, yeah. But, but your side may have jubilated too, too soon, if, if what we're hearing right now, you know. Well, I don't think we jubilated too soon. Um, the Speaker's ruling went down very well with us, and we thought that it accorded with the letter and spirit of the Constitution, and we still stand by that you know, position which we took. Of course, the order of the Supreme Court now means that we are uh, back to the status quo ante. Mm -hmm. That is the situation before, um, you know, the speaker's ruling. Okay, but that, I mean, I must say that this is a very disturbing development. Uh, the reason is because, you see, for them to go ex parte, to obtain an ex parte order means that the speaker was not on notice. Parliament was not mm -hmm. on notice. Mm -hmm. And Parliament is just a stone thrown throw away from the Supreme Court. You know, and ex parte orders are an anomaly, all right? They are used to address really emergency, real emergency situations where irreparable damage will be caused if there the, is in the, you know, the, I mean, order is not obtained, mm -hmm. all right? But in a situation where um, there was an attempt to serve, okay, an inter party order, an order on notice, mm -hmm. all right? And that service even violated the directive of the Chief Justice, you know, which is to the effect that a service on the Speaker and Parliament generally should be effected on Mondays. All right. Now, that's a Chief Justice directive that is binding on all registrars of the court and is binding on all litigants and parties. Yet the, the majority leader or the former majority leader, I will continue to emphasize that, the Honorable Afeo Markings attempted to effect service on Tuesday Right. Or, or, and Wednesday, and when it, it was not, I mean, the service was not effected, he got frustrated, you know, and, you know, I mean, he started throwing tantrums all over the place, mm -hmm. okay? Now, with this development, basically what you are doing, you know, is to tie the hands of, of Mr. Speaker and Parliament. Very well. You know, yeah, no, no but... So, of course, then, that, that will raise questions about you know, whether or not the Supreme Court could be interfering in the business of Parliament. Yeah, and, and you see, I said this is a worrying development because, you see, there are three coordinate branches of government, co-equal mm -hmm. branches of government, all right? One branch of government should not be seen to be unduly interfering in the, in the workings of another government. Waiting for one week or, let's say, next week, you know, to serve the Speaker, for the Speaker's lawyers to come to the, 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 the court and defend the merits of the injunction or to oppose the injunction on its merit is not something that the Supreme Court, you know, could not have done. And one, one a surprising, I said it's a surprising development because the Supreme Court rarely by convention sits on Fridays. Mm -hmm. So for them to have convened on a Friday so quickly mm -hmm. to, 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 you know, make orders as extensive as they are mm -hmm. against Parliament. I'm, I'm Does really, it make I'm, you suspicious? Well, that I, don't, could be, I don't want, that, to, that I don't could want be. I don't want to talk about suspicion, but I am surprised that they would do something like that because they have been equally, uh, you know, urgent matters, matters of national importance, like the anti-gay bill and so on. You know, and these cases are in the back burner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, the Supreme, the, uh, Supreme Court came out with a presser about the issues and so on. Mm. But they could, because there is a bill, a law that has been enacted, the president has refused to sign the law mm. the, and on the base, on the excuse that there, is, there are pending matters. That is urgent because we are constitutionally, I mean, obligated to make laws for this country. We have passed a law. President says that because you have not made a determination, he cannot sign the law, mm -hmm. all right? And you have, you know, you don't think that that is urgent, right? But then when it comes to the issue of representation, and by the way, um, the question of representation being lost is contemplated under the Constitution itself. Article 97 contemplates that at some point in time in the life of a parliament, there will be vacancies occurring. Mm -hmm. The fact that the vacancies occur because people have cross-carpeted or decided to turn themselves, join another party who has been in parliament as independent and so on, it should not be the basis for saying that representation should not be lost, right? Representation 
they, I mean, can be, uh, the people can be deprived of representation in a constitutionally justifiable manner. And, and, and this would case, this have been one of those it, conditions? This is one of the conditions. It's one of the conditions where you, I mean, representation is, contem I mean, con uh, uh, deprivation of uh, representation is contemplated by the constitution itself. And for me, Mr. Speaker's ruling, you know, was spot on. It's not because it advantage, I mean, it, it gave us an advantage as the, the minority now turning, you know, into a majority, right? Mm -hmm. But because on grounds of principle, the factual basis for the occurrence of a vacancy or vacancies, okay, you know, was, was well founded. Mm. Perhaps the Supreme Court felt the situation was urgent enough for it to hear the, the case as well. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, I have not seen the court papers. And I, I don't know what, uh, you know, was uh, said in the affidavit in support. Mm. All right. So I cannot talk about that. But do, do you consider it an urgent situation? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. But, so, but it, it, could have, mean, it could have put, I mean, with, 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 with the, uh, you know, the majority, minority now, majority is very confusing at this point, uh, saying that they were going to boycott the legislature. It could have put parliamentary business at risk. Perhaps that creates well, in, an urgent in some, situation. In some sense, yes, because... I don't think that if they boycotted parliament, the executive branch of government would have been comfortable passing through, you know, I mean, passing business through the, I mean, the, the new majority to parliament, right? So, yes, in that, in that sense, you can say that government business would have, would have I mean, uh, uh, suffered, okay? However, parliamentary business as a whole doesn't, it's not only about government business. Mm -hmm. Parliament can conduct its business based upon motions uh, filed by, the, by its members, you know, bills initiated by its members and so on. And the country, you know, can still go on without uh, um, the majority being, I mean, the you know, minority side, you know, being in the House. Is the country in crisis? Well, I think that there is, yes, we are in a crisis, mm -hmm. um, and it's a deep constitutional crisis. I don't think that the Supreme Court should wade into this in a way that shows that it is interfering seriously in the workings of the legislature. Mm. Because, you see... Parliament also has its role to play. The speaker has a role to play. So each time speaker says something, then you run to the Supreme Court. And, you know, the funny thing is that the Honorable Afeo Markin was even in court before speaker said something. All right, so um, he filed an injunction, you know, to restrain Mr. Speaker in respect of matters that, you know, I mean, uh, uh, that had not yet occurred, okay? Because the Honorable Harun Edusu raised the issue you know, in a meeting in, uh, I mm -hmm. mean, uh, 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 at a rally in Tamale, okay? He quickly ran to court and, and, and sued, okay? And uh, if you listen to the debate, we on our side, and I made that, I mean, uh, 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 I raised that issue personally, that look, the court does not deal with hypothetical situations, okay? The law is very clear. In Bilson and Apollo, the court said, we cannot deal with hypothetical situations. We deal with, I mean, real controversies, Okay, real controversies that have legal implications for the rights and liabilities, you know, of the parties that appear before the court. So you don't come to court asking us, you know, I mean, asking the court to give a ruling uh, on a matter that you anticipate will occur. Okay, that be that if when you come to well, court which, in that fashion. I mean, which made it easier then for the Supreme Court to, uh, you know, sit on the matter after the speaker had now, uh, you know, m made a case in, in Parliament. But, but, but you see, yeah, I mean, not to go into the legal technicalities, but you see, when you file a writ, that writ is founded on certain factual occurrences, certain matters that have occurred as a matter of fact. And they are usually contained in your, state, in, in your, in the, your statement of case, which is verified by an affidavit. Basically, you swear to an affidavit saying that the facts stated in your statement of case mm -hmm. are true to the best of your knowledge and belief. All right? Now, what facts did he swear to? Right? Mm -hmm. what, what facts did he verify right. in his statement of case? Right. I mean, you and I do not know. Right? But, but if he did, are those, those facts materially different from the facts now prevailing mm. based upon which he's gone for the, I mean, the ex parte order? Right. Okay. Right. No, so it's, there are there are questions. I, I that, get the I get the argument right. you're making and the questions that you're raising, which which you know sound valid yeah. w w while we talk about it. But I also guess that your your side in Parliament will not take this lightly. Um, 
Well, okay. We, we, we certainly, from a political standpoint, we will not take it lightly because it reverses the balance of power in parliament. Indeed. And, and we, you know, we, we you know, think that legitimately we deserve to be in the majority. So we won't take it lightly from a political standpoint. Now, from a legal standpoint, we are not a party to the action, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the NDC minority caucus is not a party to the action. And therefore, it, I mean, it is speaker and his lawyers who will have to deal with the legal issues arising out of and in connection with this, I mean, a suit that has been filed. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I mean, I have, I, I have not talked to them. I mean, the Honorable Atu Fosin, the, I mean, a, a minority, the majority leader, mm -hmm. right? But I, I suppose that given the fact that it will substantially alter the balance of power, it may be in our interest to file an amicus brief in court, you know, to, to, to bring, I mean, certain matters to the attention of the court. Mm. Because, you see, the way the court is going, I have been concerned about the judiciary interfering, you know, frequently in the workings of parliament, all right? A speaker gives a ruling. In res I mean, in respect of giving reasons for his, I mean, uh, the, I mean, the basis for informing the House that vacancies have occurred, all right? And immediately the court says, no, you cannot, I mean, uh, you, cannot, you cannot do that, mm -hmm. um, you know, because it will deprive people of representation and so on. The, the court can interpret the law, right, and enforce the law, okay? But the question is whether on the merits of what uh, the Honorable Afeo Marke has filed, Okay, there is, there is an actual basis for saying that, okay, the speaker was wrong in saying that mm. a vacancy, I mean, vacancies are for Kate. I, I mean, not only would the, uh, your side yeah. in, in the legislature figure out what to do next uh, in terms of the ruling from the Supreme Court, but it would also have to figure out what to do by the I mean, fee Central MP who has now decided to go independent after losing in the primaries. Mm -hmm. What happens to him? On your side? Well, I mean, it, it, the, the order of the uh, Supreme Court covers him, all right? And as my senior, the um, former director of the, I mean, the, the Ghana School of Law, um, Ansar Sari, has put it, we are a country governed by laws. Mm -hmm. Unless we want to turn ourselves into a banana republic, right, um, we, we have to obey the orders of the Supreme Court. We can contest them, all right, by, you know, I mean, uh, showing the court that, um, his orders were not justified or they were not legally tenable and so on and so forth. You know, but we, we will have to admit, you know, the honorable uh, member for Amenfi Central, you know, into our, into our, our midst again. I mean, I mean, as, you... Yeah, but what we can't say, um, you see, if we, I mean, it doesn't even make political sense for us to seek to exclude him. Because if we do... Oh, no, I understand that. So right. It will not make political sense for you to seek to exclude him. Yes. But what I'm driving at is whether or not he will make practical sense for somebody who had officially, you know, appealed to the Speaker to remove from the House. Yes. The Supreme Court has had a, you know, a different opinion on that. It's ordered that, it, you know, it not be done. Well, in, in you, fact, expect the, him to, the, you expect him to side with you in Parliament after this? Well, if he doesn't side with us, then we have a basis to kick him out. If he doesn't, we have a basis to kick him out. It's a right? catch-22 for him. Well, yeah, because, you see, if he comes to parliament and decides to caucus with the MPP, he would have been caught squarely again by Article 97, and we can fire him from our party. And if we fire him from our party, he will have no leg to stand in parliament. So he's better off, you know, I mean, coming, coming to our midst and, and being part of us. For a nation in crisis, in the event that you know, Parliament does not adhere to the Supreme Court ruling. Yeah. What happens? Well, I would advise Parliament, you know, in all its wisdom, um, of course, left, I mean, uh, um, I respect the Speaker, and he's, uh, he's a very matured, um, you know, an, an experienced person and a senior lawyer. So I expect that he will do, you know, the right thing by the Constitution, okay, which is to abide by the orders of the court, all right? And, and by abiding by the, court, the orders of the court, the status quo ante, as I've said, will be restored whilst he fights the, I mean, the, 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 the case that has been brought mm. by the Honorable Affairion Market. Very well. Oliver here, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. My uh, pleasure. The breaking news, the last few hours uh, here in this country, the Supreme Court has set aside the Speaker's ruling, determining that some four seats in Parliament 
uh, be made vacant. The result of that was the majority side then became a minority side and the minority side became a majority side. What this means, how it, it, you know, it plays out, what it means for the Ghanaian people also, more of that in subsequent broadcasts. But that's the latest news coming in in the last hour here in the country. And your election command center has been detailing some of these to you in the last uh, 30 minutes or so. There'll be more in later broadcasts. That'll be all from us. We'll continue with regular programming.